A couple of weeks ago we had a look at Noctia's NF-A12X25 PVM Chromax Black Swap. A freaking monster! No matter how we looked at it, it was basically perfect from noise to performance to build quality. But that thing was basically just a fan on steroids meant to push as much air as possible through whatever you put behind it. Okay, but what if you have a beefy ass cooler and all you want is a fan capable of pushing some air into your case? Well, meet the NF-S12A PVM Chromax Black, the airflow machine out of Noctua's NF lineup. So these are Noctua's NF-S12A PVM Chromax Black. And before we begin, yes, these are exactly the same as the regular NF-S12A PVM in the original Noctua color. Same airflow, same static pressure, everything exactly the same except for the color and the swap part. Speaking of which, due to them being swapped, we will not only find the S12A fan inside of the usual Noctua box, but we will also have the usual swap replaceable multicolor rubber pieces for each corner. Just like any other Noctua Chromax black fan, you can use them to give it your personal color touch. The fan itself is as Noctua as it gets, great build quality and a tiny whiny PVM plug with a 30cm long extension attached to it. The fan itself looks Kind of interesting. The wing portion with the usual Noctua SSO2 bearing underneath it uses seven not heavily bent wings with something they call anti-stall knobs. These tiny things sticking out of each blade might look like unnecessary production leftovers, but this couldn't be much further from the truth. In fact, these anti-stall knobs are actually meant to increase the maximum airflow by eliminating turbulences which would otherwise come up of the end of the wing. As usual with Noctua stuff, there is a interesting explanation page that goes over every reason why and how they did it, but the key thing to make from all of this is more airflow by sacrificing a tiny bit of static pressure. And this sacrifice really shows, while spinning at only 1200 rpm, these surprisingly slow fans are able to push about 62 CFM at 1.19 mm of H2O. That's 2 CFM more than the A12X25 monsters spinning at 2000 rpm. Even though the way the wing looks like doesn't strike me as high performance fans. But everything does make a lot of sense. There is a Noxia performance comparison page, yes, yes, another, another explanation page, but it exactly shows how they designed the A12, F12 and S12 fans to be perfectly fit for a specific use case, with the F12 being built for higher static pressure, the S12 being built for higher airflow, and the A12 a, a hybrid with the best of both worlds, or how they call it superior real-world performance. Anyway, let's see how higher airflow managed to keep up in our benchmark test. Using our usual setup, the NF-S12A managed to keep the 30 nanorad X at 63 degrees C. Now, before you draw any negative conclusion, yes, this is quite a low score compared to basically everything else, but actually it's a bit better than, than I expected. First off, the A12 is at the very top, the F12 quite a bit beneath, and the S12 a bit lower than that. Now, looking back at the comparison graph, our test is aimed to be somewhere around this line. And looking at Noctua's lines, it, it kind of fits perfectly with the A12 taking a heavy lead, followed by both other fans close by. Everything still makes a lot of sense, but where it starts to get quite heavy is when we realize that the S12A managed to outperform the F12 fans a fan that is spinning quite a bit faster. In the end, we should not forget that Noctua's S12A is spinning at solely 1200 RPM, a speed which is typically only known from, let's be honest, cheap Chinese budget RGB fans. And it's at that ridiculously slow speed that allowed the fans to be pretty damn near silent without being on the same performance level as cheap Chinese RGB fans, so it's still pretty good. While noise normalizing our numbers, we saw that not only was Doctor's S12A better at cooling than Arctic's F12, but it was also way quieter to do so at every step of the way. Now, very unfortunately for me right now, our benchmarks are a bit relying on the fan being actually good at cooling, and for fans like the S12A or 
F12, that's a bit unfair as these fans are solely meant as case fans with a big ass CPU cooler behind it which does the actual job. An example would be a big S case with a NH-U9A and three S12As in, as intake fans. In a scenario like this, you wouldn't need the S12As to be spinning any quicker than 25-50% of their max speed, making them absolutely unhearable. Now don't get me wrong, a NF-A12X25 would still be better at the job. I'm just saying that if you have a big S cooler rocking two A12X25s, having three more in the front won't give you any real performance benefit. Taking something like the S12 Ace would provide more than enough air for that job while being basically unhearable. And this already leads me to who this fan is for. In my opinion, these S12 Ace have a real hard time in today's world. Sure, they are really good at their job of providing air at low noise levels. Yes, the build quality is on point. But when you have something like an A12 X25 which is just so good at basically everything, it, it gets kind of hard to, to even consider anything else. In the end, I believe that airflow focused fans in general like have one specific use case, being the helping hand for a bigger cooler if you are on a budget. What I mean is the scenario I, I talked about before. If you have something like a NHD15 or NHU99A, whatever, and your case isn't built like a concrete wall, require you to use freaking wind turbines, why the hell would you invest in another 1 to 200 euros worth of fans that will give you zero degrees benefit if you can take a bunch of S12s, enjoy the silence and enjoy the safe 100 bucks. On the other hand, if you have something like a small form factor case and a, for example, NHL12S in there, I would definitely prefer to go with A12X25s and force as much air through that heat sink as I can, in case the CPU cooler itself may not do it on its own, Once, because like once the A12S are in there, they will take care of the job. So to buy or not to buy? If you want to use them as a helping hand to get some air in there, sure, great performance to noise ratio. But if your cooler could use some forced help, definitely go for the A12X25. The, the rule is basically, is your cooler on steroids, go for S12s, could it use some of that biblical wrath, force it with a bunch of A12s. But okay, this should be it for the Nokia NF S12A. At this point I would like to thank Nokia for sending these over to us, but if you want to keep watching, have a look at our NF A12 X25 review, which is basically the best friend we have ever seen so far, by far. And on a small side note, we now have a Discord server. I will leave all of the links down in the description below. I'm unsure where this will be heading, but we have created it and we need to figure it out now. So join and let's do whatever we are going to do on this kind of stuff. I, I'm not sure for now, but anyway, thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.